jet-assisted takeoff. Depending on the type of plane, a reduction in takeoff run of 33 to 58 percent, not to mention a definite increase in the rate of climb. This is what does it. One of these jet units will give a thrust of 1,000 pounds, its charge burning for eight seconds. The copper nozzle exhausts the gases in a rocket-like jet with a velocity of over 5,000 feet per second. The electrically fired igniter sets off the main propellant charge. The blow-off disc acts as a relief valve, releasing excessive chamber pressure. The unit is attached to the plane with mounting lugs, two of them welded to the chamber, the third attached to an adjustable band. The chamber, here shown empty, is filled with Galsit 58, a potassium perchlorate compound which burns at 1,800 pounds chamber pressure. The cap over the blow-off disc retains the fragments if the disc lets go. The disc itself is made of copper and will fail at approximately 3,200 pounds chamber pressure. The igniter incorporates a charge of black powder, which is fired electrically by a nichrome wire. The powder sets off a small pellet of Galsit 58, which in turn ignites the main charge. The entire unit, loaded, weighs 150 pounds but can be dropped as soon as the takeoff has been completed. Stowage requirements are simple. Though the units need not be kept in a magazine, they should be stowed in a dry place with a temperature of 40 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. They are stowed nozzle up and the igniter should never be installed until just before attachment to the plane. Jet units are always installed by the ground crew immediately before takeoff. But first, the electrical firing are connected to the contact points on the fuselage. A crewman boards the plane. With the battery switch on, he closes the assist takeoff power switch. The circuit is still open. The stick trigger completes the circuit. From 6 to 24 volts are required to fire the jet units. Always leave the switch off. Finally, check the release mechanism to be sure that the units will drop freely. Each hook will take the full thousand pound thrust of the unit. This completes the checkup of the firing and releasing gear. Meanwhile, the jet unit is being unpacked from its shipping case. The igniter is packed separately and must be kept separate until the unit is ready for installation on the plane. The band with the third lug is now attached and adjusted to the distance between the plane suspension hooks. The shipping plug is removed from the igniter port and the igniter, stripped of its protective tape, is inserted and screwed down.
set up the igniter tight enough to keep the high pressure gases from escaping around it. With the igniter in place, the unit is now ready for attachment to the plane. A very simple job. Be sure that the power switch is off when connecting the igniter. Check to be sure that the unit is firmly seated in the hooks. One end of the cable is clipped to the contact points, the other is connected to the igniter. This completes the installation, and the crew now prepares to install the other unit on the port side. When you're making a jet assisted takeoff, your procedure is going to be slightly different than usual. Suppose we try one with enough wind to simulate carrier conditions. Set flaps full down. Elevator tabs, slightly more nose down than usual. Assist takeoff power switch on. Check to be sure that there's no one between the rockets and the tail and throttle up to normal takeoff manifold pressure and RPM. Pull the trigger and hold it down, holding fast with your brake. Keep the trigger down till you feel the thrust of the rocket. They're expendable once they've done their job. In a land-based takeoff with little or no wind, the eight seconds thrust may not be enough for the entire takeoff run. So you have to work it a bit differently. Full flaps again. Elevator tap, nose down, same as before. Assist takeoff power switch on. Open her up till you've got full takeoff manifold pressure. Then release your brakes and start rolling. Wait two seconds, pull the trigger, and hold it down. Since you're already rolling, your rockets will last long enough to kick you upstairs. Now let's take a look at jet performance, compared with unassisted takeoff runs, on the five types of carrier planes. The F-4F, gross weight, 7,000 pounds, zero wind, unassisted. The same plane, assisted by one jet unit. Thirty-three percent reduction in takeoff run and a much steeper angle of climb for obstacle clearance. Now the F-4U, gross weight, 12,730 unassisted. The same plane assisted by two jet units.
38% less run. The F6F, 14,139 pounds. Unassisted takeoff. The same plane assisted by two units. Thirty-nine percent reduction. The SBD, ten thousand six hundred fifty pounds, unassisted. Now the SBD assisted by two jet units. Reduction 49 at one half percent. The TBF 16,000 pounds. Unassisted takeoff. Now the same TBF assisted by four jet units. A reduction of 58.4%. This is jet assistance. <laughs>